Good evening, and welcome to the Thursday, January 18th, regular meeting of the Novi Board of Education. We're glad to see uh, a record number in 2018 right now in our audience. We're thrilled to have you all here. If you'd all please rise and join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. have a, any changes to the agenda this evening, Dr. Matthews? We do have one change. It has been requested that item 10, the policy discussion, be delayed uh, until uh, all board members can be present. All right. So I would entertain a motion to approve the agenda as amended. I move that we approve the agenda as amended. Support. It's been moved by Mrs. Stevenson and supported by Mr. Cook. Is there any discussion? Okay. All those that approve of the agenda as amended, please say aye. 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 Opposed, the same. Motion carries six to zero. Next, we have our oh board recognition. No, student no. board member report. Student board member report. Excuse me. Yes, thank you, Miss Whalen. You're back. Yep. Thank you for having me. Um, the ACT test will be given on Saturday, February 10th at Nova High School, and final exams will start on Tuesday, January 23rd, and run through Thursday, January 25th. The dance concert is taking place right now in the auditorium. One Act Play Districts are taking place on Saturday, January 27th, and One Act Play Public Performance will play, take place on Tuesday and Wednesday, February 6th and 7th at 7 p.m. in a to-be-determined venue. Uh, thanks to a lot of hard work from the board and a lot of other people, uh, athletics live streaming can now be viewed at noviathletics.tv. Games are broadcasted live from the performance gym. Uh, and here's a big one. Uh, Aaron O'Leary was named... Gatorade's Player of the Year for the second time. O'Leary, the most decorated student in Novi High School history, is the popular sports drink fourth two-time Michigan Player of the Year. During her illustrious four-season career, the 5'10 O'Leary rewrote the state's record book by complying 5,748 assists in 227 matches. She also finished with 832 kills, 317 aces, 184 blocks, and 1,338 digs. O'Leary, who graduated in December with a 4.175 grade point average, has already enrolled at the University of Michigan, where she will be playing next fall. For the second consecutive year, Gatorade will donate $1,000 to a sports-based organization of O'Leary's choosing. Additionally, she is once again eligible for the Gatorade National Volleyball Player of the Year Award, which will be announced at a future date. A banner raising to commemorate O'Leary's award is planned for halftime of the Novi Varsity Boys basketball game on Friday, February 23rd. Terrific. Lots going on. Not as much as uh, last time, but yeah. <laughs> yes, that's true. You didn't have quite as much to do. We appreciate you being here and taking the time to update us on all the high school events. Um, next, we have um, board recognition. Dr. Matthews. Thank you, Ms. Murphy. Uh, January is National Oatmeal Month. Of course, January is also National Soup Month, National Hot Tea Month, National Slow Cooking Month, National Hobby Month, and National Mentoring Month. And, importantly, January is also National Healthy Weight Awareness Month. Evidently, there is a lot to recognize in January. Not to be forgotten, January is also School Board Recognition Month, a time to salute the work of our volunteer school board members and to celebrate uh, public education. Recognizing our Novi Community School District Board of Education members reflects our community's combined commitment to ensure that all children succeed. It's an exciting and challenging time in public education. The needs in our community and our nation remain great. The opportunities are boundless, but success requires an education. The members of our Board of Education recognize and are committed to ensuring that the students in our district receive an education that will prepare them to be successful today and tomorrow. The Novi Community School District provides services to children and young adults from birth through age 26. Our Novi Community School District Board of Education develops policies and makes tough decisions that help shape the future for the 6,500 students in our district. The Novi Community School District Board of Education bears responsibility for an annual budget of $75 million. Our capital projects bond approved in 2014, over 800 employees, eight school buildings, and three support buildings. Our Board of Education and hundreds like it across the state preserve the core of our democracy, public <coughs> education. They ensure that decisions on school programming reflect our community's values, culture, and circumstances. 
Showing appreciation for the important work of school boards should be a year-round process, but too often we neglect to recognize the dedication and hard work of these men and women who represent our community. Tonight, I would like to take a moment and thank our Novi Community School District Board of Education. Our community is served well by Bobby Murphy, Willie Mena, Tracy Stevenson, Ann Glebzinski, Paul Cook, Dennis O'Connor, and Kathy Hood. The seven of you serve without pay and without benefit. You serve because you have a deep commitment to the students in our district. Members of Novi's Board of Education would state that serving is an honor and a privilege. It is also a lot of hard work. Tonight, I would like to thank you for serving on this Board of Education by reading uh, the following resolution. Whereas Michigan is home to more than 600 boards of education that work to enrich the lives of Michigan students through education and directly influence instruction in Michigan public schools, and whereas Article 8, Section 2 of the Michigan Constitution of 1963 states that providing for the education of Michigan's children is a fundamental duty of state government, and whereas local school board members are exceptional men and women who have committed themselves to this duty by governing school districts and advancing student achievement in schools and communities in which they serve, and whereas during this month we join the, with the Michigan Association of School Boards, Michigan Department of Education, local school districts and community organizations to recognize and raise awareness of the countless efforts and contributions of local school boards and school board members throughout Michigan. Now, therefore, we, the Novi Community School District, do hereby proclaim the month of January 2018 as Local School Board Month and honor the contribution of Novi Community School District School Board members Bobby Murphy, the Board President, Ann Glebzinski, the Board Vice President, Willie Mena, the Board Secretary, Paul Cook, the Board Treasurer, Tracy Stevenson, Board Trustee, Dennis O'Connor, Board Trustee, and Kathy Hood, Board Trustee. Thank you all for your service. We need to schedule this every year. <laughs> no, thank you very much. I, I, it is a pleasure, to, uh, a privilege to serve, mm -hmm. and I know that we all feel that way. And we are here because of you guys. So, um, thanks for being with us tonight. We, I didn't really think about the fact that we would have such an audience to, um, to, to be here for us. Um, I know that you're really here for another reason, though, which is what we're getting to next. So, um, without further ado, I will turn it over to. Um, our next uh, item on the agenda, which is our awards, presentations, and recognitions. Dr. Matthews. Thank you, Ms. Murphy. Uh, tonight is a pleasure to uh, have our student athletes from the fall uh, present with us and also our athletic director, Brian Gordon. And he will present a report to the Board of Education on the fall sports season that we experienced in our school district. Mr. Gordon. Thank you so much, Dr. Matthews. Uh, and they are here for you, uh, just as you are always there for them. And the treats out in front, <laughs> touch, by the way. Um, another tremendous fall for us, both academically and athletically. Uh, I want to. I think we had 39 national merit semifinals this year at the, at the high school. This year, what's amazing is that 31 of those are student athletes, and so that really does show in how our kids do a fantastic job of time management, balancing. Uh, and a very rigorous academic schedule along with a very rigorous <coughs> athletic schedule um, and along with family time and all the other commitments that these kids seem to have. It's just unbelievable. You know, it, it always amazes me when, when I walk out of the school sometimes at 9 or 10 o'clock at night, there are kids still coming in. And so uh, it's a hopping place and it's, it's all good things, much of it because of the community support that we have in this town and the folks like you guys who support us uh, um, every single day with what you do for the community and for the school district. This past season, uh, Novi athletes, we had 472 males and 465 female athletes competed in over 400 contests across the state of Michigan, both at our middle school and our high school level. While our teams are typically very successful from a wins and, wins, uh, wins and losses standpoint, our student athletes continue to excel even more in the classroom as we just talked about. This year, in the fall alone, we had 322 KLAA Scholar Athletes. If you were a KLAA Scholar Athlete, please stand. And so 
those kids, uh, they must maintain a cumulative GPA of 3.25 or higher. Um, so we give out a lot of patches and a lot of, a lot of stripes and such, and so that's always a great thing. Our teams also received recognition as an academic all-state in several sports. Tennis, volleyball, swimming, and boys cross country. The Novi Athletic Department continues to host, as many of you know, many MHSAA and KLA tournaments. This past year, for this past fall, we hosted boys soccer regionals, boys regional tennis, new, the Division IV state finals at our place. We had district volleyball, KLA, uh, KLA conference swim and dive, and several KLA uh, volleyball tournaments, as Coach Latrue will tell you. Novi is the place to come when you're competing. Many of our student athletes excel in their sports to a point where they receive all state recognition. Now, each sport is unique in its nature and how they give that out. This fall, we are proud to announce that we had 18 all state athletes just in the fall. That is unbelievable. And we had, as you all know, another state championship. Our teams won two regionals. Our football team captured the historical baseline <laughs> jug back from Northville for the first time in nine years. And finally, our own Erin O'Leary, as we just talked about being Gatorade Player of the Year. She was also volleyball's the highest award that you can receive in Michigan. She was Miss Volleyball. Just tremendous. So, as you can see, athletics is, is hopping like it always is. And we have great kids, great coaches, and I want to extend a couple personal thanks to, um, first of all, uh, the folks in our athletic office, Barb McDougall and, uh, and Claire Pinkerton, who is here, who is our co-op. Uh, it's a crazy place, and certainly we don't do this alone. Um, we do have somebody here also, and we'll get to, to this gentleman, um, but also um, Mrs. Carter, who unconditionally gives up her time to support us each and every event, I won't say every day, every <laughs> event, um, taking time uh, away from her, from her own family and supporting the 2,000 plus kids that go to our school. So Mrs. Carter, will you please stand and be recognized? <laughs> Of course, all our coaches, um, you know, I often will say that kids want to play for somebody. And we have some of the finest coaches, not only in our league or in our county, but in the state of Michigan. Um, we had many new coaches stepping in and filling in for some pretty big shoes with Brad Moore in cross country and Dan Lowe's in tennis, and they were just fantastic. So without all these people and Paige Milky, who's our trainer, I don't know how we, how we can do it. We just simply can't. So very, you know, Special thanks goes out to those people. And we have somebody here today that I want to recognize additionally. Um, when you come to our events, there's always a special person. I call him the voice of Novi. He's the voice of Novi a lot of stuff. Novi hockey, Novi football. He will do boys and girls basketball. He'll do anything that we ask him to do. And so it seems like every time I turn around, I'm giving him a call and saying, hey, oh, by the way, we're doing this. And he is always there for us. Um, Mr. Jack Crawford, will you please stand and be recognized? <laughs> we get a lot of compliments from folks when they come to our place. And much of it is because of everybody around us and that makes it happen. When we host a football game, we have 36 game workers there just for one football game. From the folks in the press box to the guys on the, on the cameras to the folks doing the chains and the people taking the tickets. And so we're very fortunate to have, first of all, first and foremost, the resources to be able to do that. But uh, uh, it certainly does make for a great, great event. Um, I think what I'm going to do now is we're going to bring up our teams um, one by one. We have some coaches here as well. And they're going to do the talking because I talk a lot, and I've been told I talk a lot. <laughs> so uh, I will we'll start to move a little bit forward. Let's start with, with our football coach, Jeff Burnside. He's here with an announcement. Coach? Thank you, Mr. Gordon. Uh, I'll start off by uh, first thanking our school board. Thank you for all the support. Uh, I see you guys out at every event uh, as possible. I, I appreciate everything. Dr. Matthews, appreciate all the support we've gotten from you. Our uh, assistant superintendents. Some new superintendents, congratulations. <laughs> Welcome to Novi. Expect to see you in the fall. <laughs> Everything else out there. Um, 
I'll try to keep this as, as brief as I can. It was a, uh, a cold October night <laughs> in uh, 2009. We uh, you know, lost that jug and we hadn't had it back in a while. And although I think our record this year was subpar by my standards, definitely subpar by my standards, um, I, I'm not sure if our kids realize that we had a subpar season because uh, we were able to do something we hadn't done in, in nine years, which is beat Northville, which is our number one rival. Um, and, I, and I will tell you, <laughs> every year it, when, I, when I go out the door for that first day of practice and I see my girls and they go, Daddy, don't go, don't go. <laughs> it just gets harder every year. But then when that night happened, and to see our kids and, the, and the, just the joy and the enthusiasm and how excited they were, man, does it just make it, make it, uh, make it all worth it. And, uh, I mean, I can't be prouder than those group of guys. Um, and a lot of people don't realize this, but you know, a team of maybe 40 kids, we had 11 kids who never played football before. And, uh, man, they stepped up, did some great things this season. And, uh, man, what a, it was a great night for those kids. It was real fun. Um, and then the other thing I, I, I want to point out is, uh, you know, we've had some state, uh, all state football players the last couple of years, and these guys know that I'm not real big on individual awards, I never have been, to me football is the ultimate team game. Um, but there is one individual award I think that uh, that needs to be uh, voiced, and that is uh, Blake King. Blake King was first team, all academic, all state, uh, and I believe that that is uh, the type of individual award that absolutely should be honored. He knows, how to, is, he knows how to kick, too. <laughs> but Blake is the epitome of what we want our football program to be and the type of guys we want. Um, he is a meticulous worker on the field um, and works towards his, you know, works better get, or get better at his craft. And he's also the same way in the classroom. And uh, I'm very proud of him, everything that he's accomplished. I'm very proud that he is uh, you know, the University of Michigan as well. And I'm uh, very happy for him. Uh, very proud of uh, everything he's accomplished. So. Um, Right now we're back at it, we're in the weight room, we're getting after it, and we'll be ready for and fired up for another 2018 this year. Thank you. That was a great night. That was a lot of fun. <laughs> but you know, you, you're watching the clock a little faster. Run that thing a little faster. Come on. We got Jeff Crawford, who's another gentleman. It's Jack's brother who does a lot of our stuff as well. He, he, today he would have been here tonight to be recognized as well. Um, but he was running and announcing the middle school cheer competition over at the high school. So uh, uh, Jeff was unable to make it. So very, very, a lot of thanks go out to him. Uh, he's the voice in several different sports as well. So we have a, a couple brothers. And what was pretty cool, that I sent, uh, um, they're, they're, from, they're from the old Novi. You know, uh, when it was farm country and everything. And their parents, when they were little, probably would not send them to, uh, away to camp. And, uh, and so... We sent them away to uh, announcing camp at the MHSAA a couple weeks ago on that really cold Sunday afternoon or Saturday afternoon, wherever it was. Uh, Jack and Jeff went up to the MHSAA building representing Novi and got some professional <coughs> development um, for their uh, perfecting their craft, which is just, just fantastic. So thanks so much. Uh, I'd like to next bring up uh, our girls swim program. Priyanka, would you like to come up please? Thank you, Mr. Gordon, for the introduction. And so I think uh, one thing that may be on all of your minds is for a team of more than 60 girls, why there are only a handful of us here. So I do have a good answer for that. It's that they are off doing the things that make our team so great. For one, they're swimming at some of the most elite and difficult club teams in the state of Michigan. And they're, of course, studying for midterms next week <laughs> to keep our number one academic all our academic all-state ranking. Mm -hmm. And um, so uh, first, I'd like to thank the school board for, and of course, all the parents in the room for nurturing the sense of community <coughs> and sisterhood among our sport that I think gives us the ability to, you know, get uh, such great accomplishments. So. Without the support of our parents who are always bringing food, always volunteering, always providing for us in every way possible, we really couldn't have done it. 
And of course, um, as you all know, the pool was recently remodeled. We have received a lot of new equipment. We've received new warm-ups. And all of this was possible because of the help of the Novi Community School District. So I would like to thank uh, everybody sitting at this table, the Novi High School administration, and our amazing coaching staff for helping us get such a great season. Thank you. I think I just found a new speechwriter for myself. <laughs> it was fantastic. Thank you so much. Uh, the girls had uh, 12, 13 state qualifiers this year and uh, at the state meet at Oakland University and uh, a couple divers, all staters too. So fantastic. Great, great job. Um, Dr. Matthews, you see them in the morning mm -hmm. when you come in for your workout mm -hmm. and they, I'm assuming they beat you there. They do. Yes, they do. So. <laughs> Fantastic. Nice job, ladies. Uh, next, I'd like to bring up um, Alex Wynn um, to represent our tennis program. Hi, my name is Alex Wynn, and I'm one of the three captains on the Novi Varsity A team. Um, I'd now like to introduce Aditya Chitta, my fellow captain, to recap the season. Uh, good evening. My name is Aditya Chitta, and I was a captain of Novi Varsity Tennis, with, along with Alex and uh, my partner Robert Chen. Um, Coach Lowe's wasn't able to make it here today uh, because of some other commitments with his kids, and so we're here to speak on his behalf. Um, just a quick re recap of this season. We finished with an overall dual match record of 8-2, and two, losing to only Division I state champions Bloomfield Hills and Division II state champions Okemos. Um, I'd like to highlight that we beat our neighboring rival, Northville, with uh, <coughs> seven out of nine flights winning that day. Uh, in regards to the tournaments that we played this year, um, we, played, we placed first at the Brighton Quad, the Ann Arbor Pioneer Invite, the Novi Quad, the second Novi Quad, and placed second at the Novi Invitational. Um, on top of this, we were KLA Association Champions and Regional Champions for the sixth time in a row, beating Northville in both of these tournaments <laughs> once again. Um, to cap the season off, we placed seventh at the state finals, and four players this year uh, finished with all state first team honors. Um, Alex, uh, Sid Amarnath, myself, and my partner Robert Chen. Um, for me personally, this past season has been uh, very special because this was my last season, <laughs> and um, honestly, I cannot ask for better teammates, coaches, mentors, or um, just the Novi Tennis program. Uh, we'd like to thank Coach Lowe's, Coach Hansen, Novi Athletics, um, Administration, the Novi community as a whole, and the Board of Education for helping Novi Tennis become what we are today. Uh, thank you for invite us, inviting us here today and uh, for taking the time out of your day. Thank you. They, they, they probably have already booked their rooms in Midland for the fall, I'm sure. Uh, they, they're up there every single year. Um, to win that regional every single year, six years in a row, right? That's just, that's tremendous. And Coach Lowe stepping in and filling in, taking over the program for Coach Hansen, who is a legend in the tennis world. Uh, it's just, he did a fantastic job. Now let's not forget Mrs. Hayward, Coach Hayward, who does the, the, the JV team and the varsity B team, because we have two varsity teams. We have so many kids playing tennis, so that's just, that's great, great, great stuff. Um, next, I'd like to bring up uh, another person who um, filled in for some big shoes. Bob Smith has been a, uh, a pillar in our athletic community and most certainly in our, um, our cross-country community here in the state of Michigan. And Brad Moore, I like to say, is a disciple of that. And so Brad, uh, Brad came in this year and uh, really did a, a fantastic job of continuing many traditions that our program has had and as you can see their their kids are always dressed to, to, to the nines and their dark suits and, and uh, when they come to the board and it seems like every single fall. So uh, Coach Moore would you come up? recap of our season. Well, yeah, my first year with these guys, at least in the fall, although I've been helping out the track for over a decade. Um, but my first chance kind of in the head coach position and um, just like to say I found it, uh, it was a dream job to take. Um, support all the way around. The parents were great. The kids were great. Um, I'd definitely like to thank Brian Gordon, uh, my assistant coach, 
Mike Camilleri, who's here right now, made it made the season really great. Um, the program was obviously rolling when I got there, and I'm just happy to kind of keep it going pretty well. Um, we were um, county runner-up this year. We we're also regional runner-up, and probably easily the toughest region in the state. We were 16th at state finals. Um, numerous individual awards. Um, all, lots of all conference, all region, all county. Um, and Gabe Mudell was all state as well as um, he's he's now been um, nominated for the Free Press is putting together some awards for the top uh, athlete in the entire Metro Detroit area. I think he's got a good chance to win that. Um, but if you think they're just athletes, well, I, I also need to mention some other things here. Uh, we had uh, three individual academic all state members. Um, and our whole team was ranked fourth in the state academic as an academic all-state team. If I could introduce, that's the team we brought today. I'll introduce them real quick. So we got Alex Schaefer, Dallas Foley. Let's stand up real quick. Matt White, Matt Gostaitis, Trey Mullins, Gabe Mundell, Patik Bola, and Nathaniel Wood. So congratulations. <laughs> It's also worth mentioning five of my 12 seniors were National Merit Scholarship uh, <laughs> semifinalists. Um, that's like, we're getting close to half here, so um, that was, that was uh, an amazing part of it. Um, I just also wanted to mention that um, it's just a, a great community. I, you know, I, I've been a part of it in the spring for a while, but it, I just continue to be um, amazed at how well they're supported and how, you know, these kids, you know, they're Academic discussions will sometimes come up during practice during our downtime a little bit, you know, and they're, they're learning in all these different ways at the same time. Um, the way you, you, you all set up the whole thing for these student athletes is, is truly amazing, um, and I just wanted to thank everybody for that. So thank you. Nice job. It, it just it just amazes me, and what what uh, Gabe is up for is something that uh, we have a couple of our kids that are up for. The Free Press has put this thing together at the Film <coughs> in Detroit, and it'll be in May. It's kind of like an SP, the SP of Metro Detroit. And so I think we have we have Gabe, we have uh, Aaron O'Leary is up for one. Adrian Cannon is also up for one, and uh, Luke McDonald, one of our soccer players, uh, our goalie, who just recently got a commitment from Lafayette University and the Patriot League to play soccer. So that's it's just. So we got four kids going this thing. It's just awesome. Two off the same team. So that is just fantastic. Um, next, I'd like to bring up uh, uh, our volleyball coach. But before I do that, um, recently, you know, we we've heard a lot of uh, a lot of our our kids have been getting a lot of accolades to our volleyball program, three state championships in a row, state runner-up at uh, uh, four years ago. Uh, regional, and we're the only ones who have ever won the KLA Association Championship, like the, the tournament. That, since they started the league, nobody's won it every year. That's, that's crazy. Um, Jen came in um, here in 2012, when I came in in 2012. So we kind of came in together. Recently, um, Jen was named the State of Michigan, the Michigan Coaches Association Coach of the Year, wow. which is just a <laughs> Now, Jen is one of eight finalists for the National Coaches Association uh, of the Year. So for uh, all the volleyball programs in this great country of ours, there are eight volleyball coaches that are up for this award, and Jen is one of them. So Jen, that is just, to me, that is just fantastic. Uh, Bill, it, we are so fortunate to have a guy like Bill Roos. Bill Roos has done just a tremendous job, and I would read his press release, but you can see it online. But if Jen is to get this award, she'll be the very first Novi coach to receive this. And we've had a couple up for this. I know Brian O'Leary's been up for it. I think uh, uh, Coach Smith has been up for it. Um, but if Jen was to receive it in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, <laughs> that's where it's at. And uh, um, that would just be fantastic. Jen has really, really built this program. And we've always had a great program, no doubt. But to take it to the level that it is at, to be the finest, and it's in the article, it is the finest volleyball program in Michigan and one of the finest in the country, 
is just remarkable to me. I mean, our school is one of the finest in the country as well, but now we have a volleyball program that is just off the charts. So, um, Jen, this is the first year that um, um, Jen and I jokingly say it's an animal race. I mean, she, the girls will say that she's always been pregnant when she's been coaching. <laughs> and so, this is the first year she has. So, she's got three kids, and she's working so hard, building, you know, running this program, running tournaments. She is the volleyball guru in Metro Detroit, if not in the state of Michigan. So, Jen, that's, that's my intro to you. And so, yeah. come on. So, ladies and gentlemen, Jen. to like attention so that um, made me blush a little bit but first uh, thank you for having us tonight we really appreciate being here and um, you know I'm going to kind of summarize the season and then two of our captains are going to you know speak to you guys a little bit and, and talk about how you know the community has been so supportive uh, for us so we had a wonderful season again this year a uh, little struggle at the beginning of the year with some injuries um, some key injuries and um, working some things out at the beginning of the year. There was a little bit of panic um, of, oh my gosh, we're losing, uh, we're losing games. But uh, this senior class, we have nine seniors on the team, nine seniors graduating of 16 on our roster. So it's a significant amount. Um, they have, the last three years, their record has been 166 wins. And six losses. So when we won, when we lost two in a week, it was like sheer panic. What's <laughs> going on in the world? So uh, we were able to get it back together. But our our last loss was September 13th. Um, we didn't lose a set um, until the rest of the season. So when games. So it's a pretty remarkable senior class uh, that's going to be pretty impossible to replace. Uh, so. Um, we were 57 and three this year. Won the Class A state championship, and uh, we won the obviously regional championship, district championship. Brian kind of stole all my thunder here, um, <laughs> but won the KLA for the ninth straight year. Um, going along with the theme of the night, we beat Northville four times this year. So that's very important. Um, I, we had a lot of uh, team and individual awards, so I want to make sure I do this right. I didn't, of course, write anything down, so I going off of memory here, but our team won the Academic All-State Award um, for, all, this is the six years since I've um, been here in 2012, all six years we've won that award. It's always a team goal. Um, our overall team GPA was a 3.7. Okay, I'm um, clapping at that. <laughs> um, individually, uh, we had five seniors receive individual Academic All-State. Um, two are here, Claire Pinkerton, Catherine Ellison, Erin O'Leary's um, already at Michigan, so she's not here. Um, and the other two are here, correct? Yeah, so Julia Lang, could you stand up, please? <laughs> and Mackenzie Kwasevich. Uh, also, individual volleyball awards. We had multiple players named all-conference and all-region. We had three players named All-State, Erin O'Leary and Aubriana, as well as Catherine Ellison, like three named All-State. Uh, Brian already talked about Miss Volleyball, and Ireland talked about the Gatorade Player of the Year for Erin. She was also named Max Preps National Player of the Year, um, and I'm sure I'm missing something for her in some capacity. Uh, but, um, you know, it was, it's... Uh, everyone makes my job and our players' jobs easy. You know, everything's taken care of um, behind the scenes by the athletic department. You know, every time we're playing, we see so many familiar faces from the administration at the school. The, um, you guys, it's, you know, um, talking back to the parents, I think, I think I've seen every single board member at a game in some capacity. Um, and it makes it easy to do our job, which is just to coach. So. Um, you know, I really enjoy working with you know, all my girls. Um, I have a tremendous coaching staff. Uh, my husband coaches with me. 
Uh, we do have three kids under six, so <laughs> I need a lot of help from Brian and Barb and Claire. I've, uh, three years in a row, I've had a co-op in the athletic office, so that always helps me. Uh, but I just want to thank, you know, from me, from my coaching staff, I want to thank uh, Mrs. Carter, the administration at the school, Mr. Gordon, the athletic department, and you guys. Um, you make it fun and easy, and, um, you know, coaching these girls is, is a dream. So, um, thank you. I'll hand over to my captain. Just like Jen said, we want to thank you guys all for having us tonight, and the school board as well as the administration, we want to thank you for your continued support. We saw you guys at like every single game this season, and it means a lot to know that we have a good community there to support us. Um, we want to thank all of our parents as well as other parents in the community. Like our parents are like the best cheers in like the state, maybe even the country. Like they're insane. So I want to thank them for always being there for us. They provide us with so much when it comes to volleyball support, driving us, bringing us food, all that. Um, I want to thank the athletic department. I work there obviously, so I know a lot that goes on behind the scenes, and it's not always fun and it's not always easy. But they do the most to make sure that everyone has a smooth season. So we want to thank you, Mr. Gordon and Mrs. McDougall, she's not here. Um, <laughs> um, we also want to thank Jen and Ricky, obviously, as well as the rest of our coaches. They are the best coaches in the country, the state, and we couldn't have done anything that we did this year and the past four years without them. So thank you very much. <laughs> well, oh, uh, Mr. O'Connor has a question. Yeah, I, I just want to, before you continue, I just want to let you know that uh, tentative date has been set for February 22nd, where State Senator Colwall and State mm -hmm. Representative Crawford will be recognizing the volleyball team in Lansing for their accomplishments, not only this year, but over the last three years. So that ceremony will be February 22nd. Oh, they don't, oh yeah. Bus leaves at 8.30. <laughs> <laughs> We've already booked it. So, but thank you. Thank you for recognizing that. Um, I don't know how to wrap it up, but I can, I can say this is that we are in a very special place. And, you know, when we do our signings, and we're going to do that again on February 7th with some more kids that are going on to the next level and, and playing um, a sport of their choice at the institution that they want to go to school at. Um, you know, this, these kinds of things don't happen out of sheer coincidence. And um, I tell the kids all the time, you know, um, to appreciate because there's so many folks that, that, that help us along the way each and every day. Your teachers in the classroom, your moms and dads, your aunts and uncles. Um, this, um, this is a very special place and it's very special because of the people and the people around us who support each other, you know, each and every day. And uh, um, I cannot be more proud to be, in the, uh, to be the athletic director of uh, a, a tremendous athletic program and school in a great community. So uh, I want to thank each and every one of you, our administrators, who uh, do, do everything and everything so that these kids have every opportunity that they have. So, and our coaches, of course, and the kids. So thank you so much. Any questions from you Mrs. folks? Mrs. Kobzinski has something to I'd just say. like to make a couple comments, if you wouldn't mind, before everybody runs out. Um, congratulations, of course, to the athletes in all of the sports. I have a few that I'm biased towards, and it wouldn't be very fair to say what they are. But the swim girls did not get to stand up like everybody else did. So you guys at least stand up so we can congratulate you for a wonderful season. I also just want to reflect that um, our community has really um, supported our schools well with really wonderful facilities and when we've you know asked them for money for a bond to expand the high school or build the field house or put in a weight room or uh, redo a track or and extend academic buildings so that we can keep low class sizes and and really get the best teachers that we possibly can. It's, it's a, an effort that I just I want to acknowledge and thank the community for being behind us. It's 
really a joy to be part of the Wildcat family and to get out and watch all of your competitions. And all of us do try to do as much as we can in addition to working in the other responsibilities that we have, but uh, you make it fun. So okay. congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I know a lot of you student athletes, they, you look up to your parents or other athletes, and um, I want to say that my third grader, uh, in third grade they get to choose somebody they admire. My third grader chose a Novi student athlete. <laughs> Not just because of his athletic ability, but because of his hard work and his, and his ethics. So um, your role models, your parents are your role models to you, or athletes are role models to you, but you are role models to younger generations. And congratulations, and keep it up. Mm -hmm. Thank here, you. Here. Well, we do thank you all for being here, and we'd love for you to stay for the bond update if you'd like. <laughs> <laughs> but I know that some of you have midterms to study for, so we're going to take a brief break. So if you guys want a picture or anything outside, please take some of the food. It was there for you. That's a reception to to show you that we appreciate you and we know if we're pulling some of you right from work, we might not have had time to grab dinner yet. So please have some food, but we'll, we will adjourn until 7.45. That's five minutes for us. Hopefully that's enough time for you guys to, to take a break and grab some food and then um, go home and study really hard. So good luck on all your finals this week and thank you again for coming. Thank you. Thank you.
Okay, Can and we are back to the January 18th uh, regular meeting of the Board of Education. And um, we have just had our uh, awards recognitions and presentations. And our next item on our agenda this evening is our reports to the board. Dr. Matthews. Thank you, Ms. Murphy. In 2014, the Novi community approved a $70 million bond issue with total project budget of $75,500,000, which provided for security and technology, a new early childhood education center, classroom additions, facilities improvements, athletic sites, and parking lots, roof, furniture, and buses. And we're grateful for the support of our community. Tonight, Mr. Greg Van Kirk and Mr. Ahmad Beasley from Plant Moraine Cressa will present an update of the 2014 bond project, projects, including an overview of the goals, scope of work, progress to date, and the next steps. Thank you for being here, gentlemen. Good evening. It's our pleasure and a tough act to follow. <laughs> uh, and, and we do take great pride that maybe we can help out just a little bit with some of those facilities and different things that the kids all uh, get a chance to play on. We, we do have fantastic uh, uh, amenities and facilities. So uh, we're proud to be a part of that. And tonight we're going to give you a, a little bit of an overview of uh, the bond project. Um, I've always learned, be brief, be interesting, be seated. And so uh, <laughs> we're going to try to keep this brief and interesting, but, but please ask questions along the way. We're happy to, to answer them uh, and make it an interactive presentation if you like. Um, we always start with where we were, where we are, and where we're going to go. Uh, I'm going to start with where we were. So, so back in 2013, uh, five years ago, uh, we did a facility assessment in the fall. And, and some of the board members uh, uh, that were here back then remember this enormous book that describes all the different things of all the capital planning and all the different items that the school district needs to maintain its wonderful status. As a matter of fact, we coined it sustaining excellence, if you call it, and that's that orange block. And this is actually the informational brochure that, that went around to the community back in the spring of 2014 that the community uh, so graciously uh, supported and approved. So I'm just going to go through that because I think that gives everyone an overview of what the bond was all about. Um, the why now, sustaining excellence in our building, preserving the infrastructure, keeping low class sizes, enhancing the arts. Uh, you know, a big initiative was the Early Childhood Center. And then, you know, just again, increasing safety, uh, security, staying ahead of technology, and, and really just replacing equipment and being state-of-the-art uh, facility. Um, a bunch of benefits. Uh, we did touch every single school, so every school was improved. Uh, we still have a few more improvements, but we're getting down to the end. Uh, it impacted, we hope, every single student in the district. Um, and then ultimately, strong schools preserve and protect strong communities and, and home values alike. Uh, the bond itself was uh, $70,900,000 um, was the estimate budget at that time, uh, along with supplemental dollars from the sinking fund and recreational fund that got to what Dr. Massey was saying is approximately 75.5, and then we had to pay another million dollars of bond issuance costs things of that nature, uh, but, but so in general it's about a $75, $76 million program. Um, a real nice feature uh, was it was a no tax millage increase. And uh, at that time we were estimating that the tax rate, uh, even if this was elected, would decrease in approximately five years. And I think you're still on track and maybe even a little bit ahead of schedule for that. So, so that was what the bond issue uh, was presented to the community. Um, next, I want to cover the scope, and I'm not going to read all of this, but there was a heavy technology component, uh, a very heavy technology component, <clears throat> and then a lot of additions and, and, and just upgrades, including new Early Childhood Education Center. Um, so the list is numerous. I don't want to dive into all of it. Many of you are aware of it. And then finally, you know, we did an awful lot of work in the buses, furniture, equipment, and, and all the athletic sites parking lots, the, the fields, things of that nature. And, you know, for example, uh, the football field, the cross field, and the, the stadium field was paid for through sinking fund dollars, the track recreational fund dollars. And if you think about the uh, girls' softball and, ba and baseball upgrades, the turf and the bullpens and things of that nature, that was all bond work. So just to give you an idea of how that work was kind of dispersed about. 
Um, a major issue when we started this program was non-negotiable, was keep classroom sizes small uh, and, and have strong infrastructure uh, in technology, meaning wireless and things of that nature to, to put us uh, the ability to add on and maneuver through the future for the 21st century, all doing it with minimal learning uh, disruptions and do it efficiently. So no small task, if you think about it, $75 million, that, that is the size of the entire school district's budget. Yeah. Yeah. This is, was an overview. Uh, this budget obviously stayed the same. Totality, line items have changed over the course of five years uh, since it was planned in 2013. Uh, the schedule to the right, we are right on schedule. Um, probably a highlight that I'd want to point out is 2018 renovation and site work. So this will be the last summer you'll be seeing of us. Um, at this point in time, we've had the pleasure of being your owner's rep and program manager. Uh, but after this summer, all work will, should be concluded. And really at that point in time, it'll be furniture, equipment, technology upgrades, refreshes, things of that nature that will all be handled uh, by Jill and the rest of the administration team. Any questions thus far? This was your team that put it all together. Uh, so, so again, we were the pleasure of being your owner's representative. DMP was the architecture. McCarthy Smith was your construction manager. Mary Gray Designs, IDS is what they're commonly known as. as your technology designer. We had an athletic field consultant with foresight design. Structure tech, SME was your civil engineer. And your commission agent was Horizon. So pretty big team, uh, lots of professionals, and I think they all did a very commendable job. With that, that, that really is where we were back in 2013 and 14. Um, and I think we've done an admirable job. I'm going to turn it over to my colleague, Ahmed Beasley. Uh, even though you see me in a lot of things because uh, I live in the community, uh, Ahmed was our right hand man and the guy that was here day in and day out. And for those of you that knew him, you saw him in the football games. He'd even stay for some football games and different extracurricular activity. But uh, he's the guy that held the, the glue together with. Uh, uh, Steve, uh, with uh, Steve Barr and Mike Chagou, uh and now Jim. So I'll let Ahmed do Thanks, Greg. Thanks for having me before you today. Um, as Greg said, um, I've been sort of the day-to-day -day person on site for important person for you. It's been truly a pleasure to do so, uh, along with uh, previously Steve Barr and now Mike Chagou, Mike Chagou and now Jill. This is definitely a, a, a pleasure of mine career move to, to be a part of this program. Just seeing some of the, the, the accomplishments that come out of this school district has definitely been a good thing for, you know, for me to say that I was a part of that, of that program to some degree. So, but uh, passing, it, passing it on, taking the baton from uh, Greg here, he's usually the one that makes the promises and make them come true. So, uh, <laughs> progress to date. Obviously, one of the first key things that we needed to do, needed to do as the, uh, the bond team was to sell the bonds, secure the funds, make sure we have the funds available, obviously, to accomplish the projects that we promised to the public and to the board as well. So, in this case, your bonds were sold in three different series. And that was done to take advantage of the market and favorable uh, interest rates. Uh, the first two series at this point are completely spent which is a good thing. Uh, we're in the process of now spending the money from the third series of bond sales. A uh, key note on that is to make sure is to make sure we have to spend 85% of the bond funds that are sold in the first three years and be done in the fifth year. So 85% being done needs to be spent or should, should be spent by the spring of 2020 and we need to be completely done spending those funds by 2022. So once the bond funds are secure, it's now obviously time for project realization. So uh, as you can see here, some of the things that, just a few highlights of the program, Greg mentioned earlier, the brochure and the things that we promised that we would uh, accomplish for the board and the community, we, we did accomplish those things, obviously, and more. Uh, that was a good and to credit to the bond team that was put together. Uh, as you can see here, I'll just go through a few of the highlights here to address some of the increased uh, 
enrollments that you uh, had the pleasure of enjoying. We, we were able to build and disrupt. Instead of 10 classroom additions, we were able to do 16 classroom additions. Uh, we affectionately called the Crown School of Brown Program. We were able to construct the Early Childhood Center. And that actually is, is a trend-setting building, if you know it or not. We've had actually quite a few uh, school districts come visit. And I think one actually built one exactly like yours. So you are trendsetters in that aspect. Uh, another jewel, if you will, was the new fitness center. Uh, that was a, a, a particular uh, special accomplishment there. That, that building actually is an award-winning building from the design. And even from the start of it, uh, one of the unique aspects was that during the visioning process, we, uh, we had some of the student athletes come in and even some of the students come in to help get feedback from them because that is not just a space for athletics. That's a space that's going to be touched by quite a few students in the building. So uh, we were able to accomplish that as well. The auditorium was enhanced and upgraded. Uh, that actually added to the overall experience in that, in that particular space. We were able to accomplish the athletic fields, give new, new synthetic turf at the football fields, replace the track. Um, technology is always obviously something that needs to be taken care of, we were able to enhance and, and increase that, that platform for you. Uh, we also uh, went, up, went and spent the funds to take care of uh, classroom furniture, equipment, music equipment, instruments were purchased as well. And as it relates to site and roofing, we were, we were able to take care of some of those items as well. As you can see in the presentation, we actually touched and replaced 75% of your roofs. So with that, we want to make sure we give you a good idea of where we are financially. Uh, this here is just a, a brief snapshot of where we stand financially with uh, the budget, where we are, the actuals that were spent, what we have left, and what is, is left after that. Um, a couple of columns that I want to bring to note is the projected bu budget versus the actuals that were spent or actuals approved. And, actual commitments. The actual approves are money that was actually spent. So as you can see at the bottom of that column, actual approves, we spent at this point $61 million. Actual commitments are a little over $3 million and those are, those are items that we have contracts and purchase orders for, but we still have yet to finalize those outlook balances and still yet to be paid. Obviously there bunch of items, things of that sort that need to be taken care of before we release some of those funds. Um, moving over, another item I just want to point out is that uh, at estimate, the estimated completion, uh, if you look at that column, we're estimated to be, uh, have spent 75, a little over 75 million, which leaves you with 1.1 million funds on the budget. So with those funds, that's, again, that's a testament to the bond team. Uh, like I said, under the direction of, with the help of Mr. Steve Barr, continuing on with Jill, Mike Jagu, and, and, and all the staff and the bond team that we put together. A lot of hard work, uh, a lot of uh, arm wrestling a little <laughs> bit, but uh, all worth it. Definitely all worth it. But the 1.1 million is what you have now, and we, we're projecting you to be under, under budget at that, that amount. That is good news. It is. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> no value engineering. Yeah, that's great. So moving on, next steps. Um, with that uh, 1.1 million, uh, we're labeling that as a rainy day or refresh, which you can use to uh, purchase buses. Buses obviously have a specific useful life. Uh, technology always can upgrade technology as technology advances. You always want to stay on the cutting edge, so you have funds to, to refresh uh, that as well. Uh, a couple points I want to point out is that we currently are uh, upgrading lighting throughout the district, internal light building. I was going to say, Matt, before you move on, what is FFE? FFE is Furniture 
Oh, fixtures, Fires equipment. Fixtures okay, things. thank yeah. you. Sorry. That's okay. Yeah. Sorry. Technical lane going on. We but do that's okay. I, I should have been able to put it together, but if somebody no, else is looking on. at it. Okay. Perfect. So so go ahead. Next steps. So next steps, we are currently under work is a bid pack nine work, which came before you not too long ago. Mm -hmm. That's replacing interior lighting, parking lot lighting. Uh, we wanted to take care of those items as well because they obviously deal with the operating costs that, that you, uh, you, you incur. So to take care of those items and go to more efficient uh, lighting it will help out the district along the lines uh, from, from a financial standpoint. Uh, a few of the other items are just continuing on with upgrading uh, furniture, fixtures, equipment, things of that sort, and planning for the work that's coming up. Uh, as Greg mentioned, in the fall here, our, our portion of oversight of, of, of what was going on will be complete. Um, I'm, I'm still here for questions, but uh, technically, <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I'm, I'll, I'll, I'll be on, on a different project, but hope to continue on in my work here. Um, that's where we are. Are there any questions? Questions from the board? I would like to uh, mention that uh, Ms. Minnick's uh, uh, seamless transition after Mr. Barr left and, and has been a good partner with uh, Plant Moran Cressa and the, and the rest of the bond team, so we do appreciate that. Yeah, thank you. Stepping in. And Mr. Potter? A um, couple things. Um, it's, been, it's been five years, just in terms of when we talk about next steps. Clearly, this is the completion of the bond. But it's been five years since we've done an assessment. And... Um, do you have a feel with your people and, and working with the construction people, et cetera? You said, for example, 75% of our roofs have been, have been um, uh, refurbished. But do you have a sense of where we are from an infrastructure standpoint? And the reason I ask is, you know, you work with a ton of school districts. The horror stories all over Oakland County. I mean, it's, it's scary. I mean, pools are being closed in Clarkston. <clears throat> There's a million-dollar repair in, in uh, Royal Oak that was unexpected why they had no insurance I don't know but there's millions a million dollars here a half a million dollars there's a lot of infrastructure issues with a lot of school districts in Oakland County and I'm just wondering do we know where we are based on sure. I know it's been five years do we know where do we need to do it an, another assessment to up, update where we're at what, what's your feel on so overall the district facilities are in good shape but you, you have approximately a million five square feet that's about one square feet. Uh, and, and typically, you know, you would spend, uh, you know, uh, upwards of $100 every 20 years, $100 a square foot every 20 years. And so what, what ends up happening is a lot of districts break it into chunks and they do bond issues every 7 to 10, 12 years. Um, so, so we are... Uh, will have been uh, commenced to start the facility assessment right now. It's been five years. So if you recall five years, we were engaged. We started a facility assessment. And we said every five years we would do that. So um, we have just kicked that assignment off. We are starting to walk buildings. And uh, this late spring, early summer, you're going to get another big, heavy book. And you'll, it'll also be digitized, obviously. Um, but, but that will walk through and explain all the facilities. And so there are a couple things I'd like to point out. If you look at your district uh, and some of the buildings that we touched, some of them we did some major invasive improvements. Um, some of them, very cosmetic. So, so if you think of the middle school, it didn't do a whole lot of work there because it didn't need it. Deerfield Elementary didn't need a whole lot. We put the additions on it, but, but we did work, don't get me wrong. We, we, we touched every building, like we said, and we've improved them. But we did do work that didn't need to be done. Uh, so, so we're commencing with a new facility assessment um, that should be done, like I said, sometime uh, late spring, early summer. Uh, and we'll have a new list of these are the things that have to be done. So I so, would imagine... Excuse me, is this something that's been... Is this budgeted? Uh, uh, yep. This uh, is news news. So we're, uh, okay, we've so uh, we, uh, brought this through the Capital or? Projects uh, Committee and, okay. uh, and, and uh, through Ms. Minnick's office. And, and so we, we have this budgeted. We have it planned. Uh, uh, we, we believe it's uh, prudent for the district to have this assessment so that we can 
make make some decisions about what our next steps need to be. Okay, so yeah, this is new to me. So this is so you we're going to get a big thick book again. Yeah, we're just, very similar just to two thousand fifty. I mean, no, no, I understand. I just didn't even know we were proceeding. So okay, yeah. so this is all right. so. But 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 you will have. By example, we only touched seventy-five percent of your roofs. We didn't touch all of your mechanical systems. We didn't touch all of your parking lots. Uh, again, you know, some of the middle school and a couple of the elementary schools, fine shape, didn't need to. But in two thousand thirteen, they were fine. The next five years, they were fine, and maybe for another three, four years, they'll be fine. But but by that time, maybe eight, nine, ten years have passed. Deerfield Elementary School is starting to climb up on maybe a twenty-year run of the building, mm -hmm. just like your house, roofs, windows, HVAC, things start to deteriorate. Buildings are a perishable item, and so every once in a while you've got to put the TLC back in. Um, so, so to answer your question, uh, Mr. O'Connor, we're, we're just kicking that off. I would say your facilities are in you know, great shape, as you can all attest, as you walk around and, and you have beautiful facilities. The, the, the key is maintaining those. Mm -hmm. And that's a regular battle that, that every homeowner and every facility owner all have. Okay, thank you. Other questions from the board? No comment, mm -hmm. and maybe a little question, but um, really appreciate the, the way the projects have been handled. Uh, looks like we have about uh, three quarters of a million dollars under budget on building additions, improvements, and roofing, and with that amount of roofing that we. Uh, touched and building additions and, and um, improvements it's you know it's great to see that especially when we went from 60% uh, more rooms adding 60% more rooms than we had initially planned um, but the, the, the my question comes down to I guess we, we spent a lot of money on improving the lighting and stuff in all the buildings for efficiency and stuff like that to kind of cut down our operating costs can we see some numbers on that one of these days I guess is would be more towards the business operations office to, you know, see what a re return on investment is and if that investment is really paying off. And you know, it'd be nice to see some of these numbers rather than just blindly going and spending money on the latest, latest sure. technology or the late, latest thing. Um, I guess in the future, sometime I'd like to see that. Absolutely. Currently underway, as Mr. Mankirk mentioned, is impact nine, which is a lot of the lighting upgrades. And so over time, as we see those changes in our utility costs, we'll certainly be looking at those savings and make sure we're generating uh, savings to our bottom line for those improvements. So, so a lot of that has not been done yet. So we'll be looking uh, probably a year out, maybe before we really get solid numbers back. Right, at least in terms of the lighting upgrades that are going on now. Okay. And I don't believe there were lighting upgrades done previously in the earlier years. Um, minor. There, there were some uh, okay. done minor, but uh, not to the extent, obviously, that we're doing. Uh, uh -huh. We're yeah. down, so. Great. All right. And Mr. O'Connor? Are the um, the forecasts and commitments, which are about the $10.8 $10. $10. dollars, which is what we have left, is, is that what's going to be covered in the bid pack 9 and 10? The, that will be bid pack 9. Well, bid pack 9, you've already approved. Uh, okay. In, in these numbers, we have some timing differences of when this was. This presentation was approved by the Capital Projects Committee um, prior to the holidays, and so so there is some things that have, you know, we have some timing differences. Um, so some of that is now committed, um, along with Impact Ten, um, and then you will have future technology, furniture, and things of that nature. So all that's of part those, of that ten point eight. That's part of that ten point eight. All those dollars. Um, go back to if you the beginning of the presentation, the scope of work. All those dollars are the dollars that were promised to the community. These are the things we're doing, so on and so forth. So these forecasted commitments are they have they been spec'd out yet, or are they just some still have, some have it, so, so in big pack ten, <clears throat> yes. Okay. I would imagine some of the furniture, which we are not necessarily running, that would be the administration team, the furniture, so on and so forth. I think there are specs, and you have a regular kind of replacement program for classroom furniture and for example your buses things of that nature you have a in other words you don't buy all your buses at once that's what's a yearly type of thing and uh, that's all included in those those commitments is it possible dr matthews i mean not in the next two weeks but as we get closer to these forecasted commitments that just that we get some details yes. as we spoke certainly as we spec those out just so yep kind of know where the 10.8 is going yes we can certainly do that 
Thank you. Other questions, comments from the board? Well, I know I did see you and Mr. Dugu over at Parkview walk in the building on the leadership day, and you said you were putting your list together, so I'm going to sneeze. I apologize. My timing's bad. Okay. Um, anyways, I, 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 I'll speak for on behalf of the board. We do really appreciate the work and the effort you've done. Coming in under budget's huge. That's a great thing. You guys have been on it. I know that you've given a lot of information to Capital Projects. I've been on it for a while. You're really good at giving us a lot of information, um, um, and I appreciate that, and um, certainly appreciate you being here to kind of tell us, you know, where we're at with everything and, and where maybe we need to go next. So um, thank you. We look forward to the big binder. Um, uh, we we, uh, we want to say what a pleasure it's been working with your entire team, Dr. Matthews, the administration team, and even you know, the school board, et cetera. I, I don't know if a lot of folks know part of the reasons we're under budget, um, for those that were on the Capital Projects Committee, we pushed really hard and we did a lot of work the first couple of years to get ahead of the arena and some of the spike that we were forecasting. And uh, we were correct and, and the construction price index has moved uh, rather heftily and uh, you know we, we got ahead of all that. And so uh, we did an awful lot of work the first couple of years. If you remember, I uh, uh, cleaned some of those classrooms ourselves uh, last minute on uh, Labor Day. So uh, we really pushed the envelope to, to, to get ahead of the construction boom that has been going on. We got ahead of it by a year or two, which is why we've seen such really positive results. And yeah. so uh, we couldn't have done it without you all. And uh, it's been a pleasure, uh, you know, uh, being able to serve uh, Novi School District. So, yes. thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Mr. I'd, I'd like to just echo what Mr. Van Kirk said. That you did push us, and, and we appreciate that. That mm -hmm. that first chunk of that forty-five million, it okay. was tough. But uh, again, I, I go back just to my reference it, with the Oakland County School Boards Association. A lot of Oakland County schools now that are going through what we've already gone through are doing it at quite a, quite a higher cost because of this. So getting that first chunk in really was it really major. It, it, no, but it was and it was a good push because we really were ahead. Because if you remember at the time, there were no projects. And now the, the economy has changed, uh, construct, not just with uh, you know, the Joe Louis Arena, but just a lot of different construction. And prices have gone up. Mm -hmm. So this is, this is really great that, that we were ahead of the curve on that. So thank you. Yeah. And that really was you pushing and, and really informing us of, of what you to anticipate as, as your expertise in construction. I, know that, I don't know that we would have put all that together. So thank you for pushing us and, and certainly for coming in under budget. That is something that we always appreciate um, because that just means more money that we can do more things for kids. So we do appreciate that. And thank you for being here and taking the time out of your evening to update us. Um, we look forward to seeing you again, Amanda, in the, in the, <laughs> at the baseball games and so forth. Oh, yeah. so. All right. Have a good evening. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. All right, next on our agenda is comments from the audience related to agenda items. This is the first um, opportunity for comments from the audience um, at this point in time. If anyone would like to address the board, there are cards in the back that you can give to our administrative secretary. Seeing no one approach the podium, um, we will move on to consent items. Dr. Matthews. Uh, thank you. You have uh, uh, consent items tonight. Uh, a and B. A is approval of minutes from the uh, uh, regular meeting of January 11th and the work session of January 13th. And B is approval of bills, uh, the check register for November 2017 and the purchase card report for October 1st through October 31st of 2017. Okay, I would entertain a motion. Mrs. Klobzinski. That the Novi Community School Board of Education accept consent items A and B as presented. Support been moved by Mrs. Klebzinski and supported by Mrs. Stevenson. Um, all those in favor of accepting consent items A and B, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same. Motion carries six to zero. Uh, next to our action items, we have a personal recommendation. Dr. Matthews. Thank you, Ms. Murphy, and I will turn to Mr. Kinzer. Good evening, thank you. Um, just one personal recommendation for this evening, and this is Emily Roquet. Uh, at the Early Childhood Elementary, I'm sorry, Educational Center, preschool teacher. Um, she is, was a sub in the district and uh, we're recommending her for employment. All right, I would entertain a motion. Mr. Cook? Uh, I recommend that the Novi Community School District Board of Education adopts personnel report recommendations as presented. Support. Been moved by Mr. Cook and supported by Mrs. Stevenson. 
Uh, any discussion on the item? So it's a small item. Um, we're excited to have, I know that we, we, lot, we had a teacher that retired out of the ECEC, is that correct? Or do we have um, more students? Do you know? More students. More students. Yeah. Well, that's wonderful. All right. Um, all those in favor of approving the personnel uh, recommendations as presented, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries six to zero. Uh, next, um, we have our next opportunity for comments from the audience. <laughs> Seeing no one left in our audience after our big crowd this evening, we will move on to the superintendent's report. Dr. Matthews. Thank you, Ms. Murphy. As our Board of Education is aware, the School Finance uh, Research Collaborative released uh, their report yesterday that detailed how much it costs to educate students in Michigan. Now, the report provides evidence that Michigan is underfunding schools and especially underfunding schools in the areas of special education and English language learners. Uh, my hope is that everyone pays attention to this report and contacts their state legislators to ask them how our legislators will address the issues raised in this report. Uh, the Consensus Revenue Estimating Conference was held recently. This is a twice-year uh, gathering of economists, state legislatures, uh, legislators, and the governor's office to discuss the general fund and the school aid fund revenue and expenses. The good news is that the school aid fund is up. Uh, the bad news is that the general fund revenue is flat. Uh, I would encourage everyone to be mindful of the budget discussions as they unfold in the legislature this spring, uh, as there has been a tendency in the past uh, several years uh, to prop up the general fund uh, through the school aid fund. Uh, Mr. Gordon has left, but uh, Mr. Gordon was selected as the MIAAA Region 11 Athletic Director of the Year, uh, and so congratulations to Mr. Gordon for his exemplary uh, work in our district. And finally, I would like to continue to thank our maintenance staff for their work this winter. Uh, salting, plowing, ensuring that heaters are working is more than a full-time job in the winter. And they do exceptional work, and I appreciate all that they do to uh, keep our district up and running uh, throughout the winter season. And that's my report this evening. Thank you. Next, we have our administrative reports. Ms. Hill. Yes, just, Ms. just a quick question for Dr. Matthews. How are, how are we doing on the student growth plan? Is that, I know that was kind of congress by yep. the end of the year. Would you have a status on that? Uh, the status is that uh, Dr. Weber, uh, Mr. Dinkelman, and I uh, uh, have a, a tentative plan that we're still kind of working through, and, and uh, we should be able to give the board uh, some uh, information on that uh, coming in uh, uh, probably March uh, to the board. Okay. okay. Thank you. Okay. Ms. Smithick. Good evening. Thank you. Uh, yes, Dr. Matthews mentioned the consensus room that today conference took place. Uh, so I won't mention anything more about that. Um, but I did want to just acknowledge uh, our transportation department. With the challenging weather that we've had, we have not had any bus incidents. Um, I appreciate their safe transportation of all of our students in our community. And uh, so sometimes in these challenging weather conditions, it can get tricky. Um, and so sometimes buses are late and maybe they're not on time. Uh, but that is a reflection of our drivers taking every precaution to be sure that they're safe. So that's all I have this evening. Thank you. Thank you. And Mr. Kinzer. I have no report this evening. Okay. <laughs> Great. Right, good evening. Uh, <clears throat> today we met with our inner school council parents. So these are parents that we meet with every month, uh, presidents of our PTOs. Want to thank them for their candor, always providing great feedback on us. Today we spent a considerable amount of time talking about feedback from our teachers to our parents regarding the progress of their students. And uh, always good to hear where we can get better and some of the victories that we have. Uh, one of those that I heard today was um, some of our teachers actually using our MyStar system to communicate with parents directly in the moment. And while we were in the meeting, one of those pieces of feedback popped up on one of our parents' phones and she showed it to me. And, and I want to thank our teachers who are doing that. Uh, also today, the board hasn't seen this, and, and it's the WXYZ feature on the Frog Force at Wood. There's a four-minute spot on Channel 7. Uh, that was born really out of our Curiosity Kit initiative over a year and a half ago. So each one of our elementary schools has uh, at least one 3D printer, our middle school has four, our high school has at least six. And the piece uh, that was done by uh, Mr. Prakash was amazing, and our kids were fantastic. And, and as we saw tonight, our parents, our kids, our staff, everybody, the kids who came to that podium and spoke tonight, amazing. They thank their parents, they thank their coaches. Not only are they gracious, they're eloquent, and when we hear about their athletic prowess as well as their, just their ability to get up and hold uh, hold all of us and our attention is, is wonderful. So, and it really comes back to those parents around their school and the parents who are in our homes. Thank you for that. That's it. Perfect. All right, next we have our committee reports. Are there any 
Committee reports? Mm -hmm. All right, we have not had any committee meetings since the start of the year. So next is board communication. Mrs. Klobzinski. Yeah, a few of us had the opportunity to attend the Martin Luther King Unity in the Community event Monday evening at the high school. And I want to um, congratulate and thank Mr. Knuckles and Spud mm -hmm. for their organization and really variety in the program. And also just make a comment that the acoustics in there, the new sound system, it was wonderful um, to be able to hear everything so clearly. And it's just a beautiful facility. And uh, I thank the community members that came out and supported that event. If, if you haven't ever been to it, I, some Martin Luther King Day take the opportunity because we have a, uh, a very diverse community and it's a wonderful celebration of that, that diversity. Thank you. Mr. Um, I came over here tonight from uh, a uh, parent kickoff meeting for the Invention Convention at Parkview. Uh, this is a uh, science fair type event that's going to be taking place in, uh, in the STEMI Coalition in conjunction with the Henry Ford reached out to our Parkview teachers and um, pretty much said uh, your kids are innovative and we'd like them to compete in our uh, invention convention, which is um, this year is the first one for Michigan um, at the Henry Ford. And then also the national competition will be at the Henry Ford. And the Henry Ford will be hosting the national competition three out of the next five years. Um, they have guaranteed six slots for teams out of Parkview um, and right now there are over 50 teams that are going to be competing for this. Um, this is not your typical science fair where somebody goes and they have a theory, they investigate that theory, do an experiment and report on the results. These are kids that have to be innovative, come up with a real life problem, invent a solution, do the research, build a prototype, do a presentation, have a, have a board with the presentation. There's an entire thought process that will take them the next two months to do. Um, to do this, the kids will have to compete March 1st for those six slots. Then they will compete at the Michigan event, which is later in March, or the beginning of April. And if they get through that, they can, can compete at the national level in the beginning of June. Um, this is not just third and fourth graders from Parkview, but those are the ones that we are sending. This is a competition for third through 12th. So anybody can compete in this. So um, the only stipulation is you try to remain in your own age group. So third graders will not be competing with 12th graders and the likes of that. But um, those kids are excited. There's, like I say, 50 teams ready to go. Um, the other thing I'd like to say for tonight is the Parent Action Committee, Special Needs Parents Action Committee, again, is they're doing their, um, I mentioned it before, they're doing their um, above and beyond um, recognition. Anybody can nominate a student teacher that's going above and beyond to help the special needs kids. Um, the application is online through their uh, the link on, on the parent um, site, and uh, deadline is next Friday right now. So if you know somebody that is going, helping out these kids, helping them down the hallway, getting them ready for the bus, go ahead and nominate them. Anybody can nominate them, get it into them, and everyone will be recognized. And again, they'll pick the one person in the district that uh, for a, an overall prize, but every single person that gets nominated gets recognized. So. For mentioning that again, Mr. Cook. Any other word communication? No? All right. Um, I, I have nothing. So <laughs> with that, I will ask for a motion to adjourn. So moved. Support. So moved by Mrs. Kuczynski and supported by Mrs. Stevenson. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 6-0. to zero. We are adjourned for the evening. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thanks, everybody.